Hi, welcome to another episode of Vibe with Velo. Today we're going to be looking at the Wix Fetch API. This API is helpful for reaching third-party services that provide REST APIs. There's other ways to access these services, and also sometimes they will offer you NPM modules, pre-built Velo packages, or widgets already in the Wix marketplace. But for those APIs that don't have access to a pre-built solution, or you need a little bit more customization than what's already pre-built for you, Wix Fetch enables you to access data, post data, update and delete data in those third-party services. The main one we're going to be focusing on today is going to be get or retrieving data from a third-party service. So like reading a, a database read would be the equivalent. And with that, let's go ahead and dive in and start looking at how do you utilize Wix Fetch on your Velo enabled Wix site. If you ever need to learn more about how to work with Wix Fetch, you can always check the Velo reference to see more about the Wix Fetch API. If you're not sure what API to use, you can always Google a couple different APIs. Programmable Web is a great resource for finding third party services out there. I just Googled fun APIs and found this really random one called the Board API. And this tells us something to do. So if we're really bored, aka we're in another quarantine, we can see what it suggests for us to try out. So we can see here the API that we're working with. And in this particular instance, we're going to be working with the activity endpoint. So the endpoint is the resource that we're trying to access with our Wix fetch. And it gives us the activity, the type, and the number of participants for it, which are going to be the key information we're going to want to display on our Wix site. Let me switch back over to my Wix site. Here I already have a UI set up to have a button that will access our get random activity function that we're going to build out here and it'll update the data for the activity information. In the, my code files, I'm going to want to go to a back end file and find and either create or use a JavaScript web module that I already have. So a .jsw file. In this case, I already have one set up for myself. So let me go ahead and maximize that so we can see it. Okay. And I already have the URL of the API that I'm trying to access. So all I need to do now is start working with Wix fetch. At the top here, you can see I've already imported the fetch function from the Wix fetch API. When you see it in curly braces like this, that means we're not importing the entire API. We're only importing a the specified functions of that API. So in this case, the only thing we're really concerned about doing is fetching. So we just imported the fetch function. This also keeps our app more lightweight and helps us improve performance. Again, because fetch is going to be a heavier, more intensive operation that is also dependent on a third party service, we're going to want to make sure it's in the back end so it doesn't hurt our performance of the UI of our application and block the UI from loading while our users interact with the button on our screen. So fetches are always going to be done in your backend code. When you want to start working with fetch, all you have to do is start typing fetch. And it's going to take in two parameters. One is going to be the URL we're trying to access. So in this case, the board API. And the other one is a headers object in a JSON format. So in this case, the header includes information about the type of activity we're doing or the verbs that we use when we're using the fetch API. The main verbs that you're going to be working with with a fetch are post and get. You may do a put or delete, but my guess is that you're mostly going to be working with get, which is a data read or post, which is a data insert into a third party service. So in this case, we're going to be identifying the method and we're going to be doing a get because we're just going to retrieve data from this API in this example. Now, as I mentioned, we are relying on a third party service and this is a more data intensive operation. So it is going to be promised, which means it is asynchronous. If you are curious to learn more about asynchronous and Velo, we have a video in the Vibe with Velo series already. I'm going to go ahead and put the link here. So if you want to check it out to get a little refresher. All right, now that we remember how to work with asynchronous functions, let's go ahead and use the dot then notation because we know this fetch is promised. So we're going to go ahead and dot then and wait for this promise to resolve. 
when the fetch resolves and gets us data, we're going to go ahead and look at the HTTP response from this API call. HTTP responses normally return a header code that tells us if it was successful or not. 200s are positive success messages from our API call. That means we got the data, we have the information we needed, and we're okay to keep moving forward with this API's data. A 400, you may have seen this before in like a 404 not found or a 401 forbidden, is generally we're not able to access that resource for whatever reason it is, whether it's we don't have permission to access that for that resource or that resource is unavailable to us. You may also run into a 500, which is generally a server error. So the API itself is probably down or the API provider is having some issues. So there's not much you can do when you're troubleshooting a 500 error, except reach out to the API provider. A 200 success message is considered an okay. So what we wanna do is check to make sure our API re response includes a okay. So we can just check that by using dot okay, which means we got a 200 success message on this API call. If that everything looks good, then we're gonna go ahead and return this promise with the HTTP response. Now the HTTP response is a big object that includes a lot of information that we probably don't care about when we're actually using the data in our API. So the main thing that we're gonna care about in this response is the JSON, which includes the returned body object that we've seen on the API return. So this is our JSON object, and that's really the only information that we care about here. We don't need to see all the headers and response information. Otherwise, if it wasn't successful, we can go ahead and reject this promise by saying promise.reject, and we'll give a reason saying fetch did not succeed because we always want to provide as detailed information as we can to whatever the calling service is of this function. So in this case, we'll know that we weren't able to successfully get data from this API. The last thing we need to do is make sure that we return our fetch because again, this is going to be run asynchronously. So we need to let the calling function know when we successfully have gotten the JSON or the, the failure message. So we need to return that message all the way back up to whoever is calling our get random activities function. Now, since we are doing this in the back end, we can test this using the new functional testing feature. By clicking the play icon next to my function, I'm able to run a test of this call. So let's go ahead and run it and see if we successfully get data back. It looks like it returned successfully with an activity, which is fantastic. And it means that it's ready to be used in the front end of our application. I'll go ahead and switch over to our homepage code. And here you can already see that I've imported this activity from our backend and called it in the activity button click event. We know that this is promised because again, we are working in an asynchronous function. So we're gonna wait for this promise to resolve. And when it does resolve, we know we're getting a JSON object back. We can parse that JSON object for the activity type and number of participants and then update our UI elements with the appropriate information from that response. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this so we can take a look at what it looks like on the live site. Once my site is ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and click on suggest an activity and we should see that you should try, we'll update with an activity suggestion for us to do because we're bored and we've already taken a nap today. So it's suggesting maybe I can make a scrapbook with pictures of my favorite memories. And this is an activity I can do by myself and it's considered a DIY activity. If we want another suggestion, cause maybe that's not the right one. We can memorize a poem, learn how to make an Alexa skill, find a DIY to do, buy a new house decoration, etc. So it's super easy to incorporate third party data and services into your application using Wix Fetch. Today we focus mostly on get. And if you want to learn more about posts, then keep coming back to Vibe with Fellow and we'll do a Wix Fetch post video as well. So stay tuned and have a great day. See ya.